All right, welcome. We today we are doing module two, topic one, and today we're going to talk about factoring. A lot of different factoring. You will need to remember how to factor basic quadra uh, quadratics, hopefully, and we'll get to that in a second. But um, we're going to learn a lot of different ways of how to factor: higher order factoring, distinguishing polynomial equations, identifying zeros. Lots of fun stuff today. All right, so factoring out of GCF. So um, I'm going to do this a little bit different. This is on page 276. All right, I'm just going to factor this one that Ping does. I want to show you how to do this. So 3x to the third plus 12x squared plus 36x. So I have to look and I have to find a factor that goes into 3, 12, and 36, and I'm taking it out. So if I always go to the smallest number, 3, and I look at all its factors, 1 times 3, and I say, does 3 go into 12? Yes. Does 3 go into 36? Yes. That's the biggest one, so I'm going to take it out. Then I look, I also have 1x that I can take out. So when I go back, I divide. 3 divided by 3 is 1. I had 3x's. I took 1 away. There's 2 left. 12 divided by 3 is 4. I had 2x's. I took 1 away. 1 is left. 36 divided by 3 is 12. Uh, I had... 1x, I took it away. Now, that's that. Now, um, one thing I want to talk about, the book makes a mistake. So we're going to take this, 3x, and we're going to change one thing. We're going to make it minus 12. Whoa, whoa. All right, minus 12. All right. And then why we're going to do that? Now it says completely factor. So I have 3x and I have x squared plus 4x minus 12. Now, now I have to factor what's left inside into two binomials. So I have to look. What are two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to 4? Well, you could write all your numbers down that multiply to 12. I notice that negative 2 and 6 add to 4, so those are my answers. So x minus 2 and x plus 6. All right. It says, now we're going to identify the zeros. So I have to set each of those equal to 0. 3x equals 0, so x is 0. All right. Um, x minus 2 equals 0, so x add 2, x equals 2. And then x plus 6 equals 0, x equals negative 6. That says to sketch it. Well, I know it's a cubic because there's a third degree, so I know it should either look like this or like this. My a is positive, so it's going to look like this. So I'm going to go up through here. Whoa. Now, you could have drawn yours a little bit differently. All right. All right, so let's try one of these. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take out a common factor. 3x goes into 3, 3, and 6. So I took that out. I divide. I have x squared plus 1x minus 2 because I divided it. Now I have to ask myself, what are two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to 1? Well, that's positive 2 and negative 1. Find my zero, so that's zero. Subtract two, that's negative two. Add one. So I have negative two, positive one, and zero. And again, it's going to be a cubic, and it's positive a, so it's going to look something like that. Over here now, notice I have a squared, so when I draw it, it's a quadratic, right? So I can take a common factor out, I can take a 2 out, and I can take an x out, and that leaves me with x plus 3. So I have a 0 at 0, and I have a 0 at subtract 3, that's negative 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. It's positive, so it should go up, so I just need to have some kind of quadratic here. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right. Let's go to the bottom. Let's try, uh, let's try d. So I'm going to take a 10 out. All right, now can I take an x out? No, I cannot take an x out. All right, so now I have x squared minus 5, x minus 6. So I have 10. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. 
All right, so that I believe that would be x minus 6 and x plus 1, because negative 6 times 1 is negative 6, and it adds. So now my zeros, 10 equals 0, x minus 6 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. So this is 6, this is negative 1, but look at this, can 10 equal 0? No. For that to be 0, I would need an x there, and I don't have an x. All right, so this is at negative 1 and 6, and it's a quadratic. All right, so I need to draw a u-shaped, oh, something like that, okay? All right, now on this one, we have a different kind of factoring, okay? Um, this is a very specialized thing. So I start with 9x squared plus 21x plus 10. Now, this is these are very big numbers. But one thing I notice is that my very first term is a perfect square. So what is that squared? That is 3x, right? So if I squared that, I would get 9x squared. And I also know that 3x is in 21x. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to say 3x is the same as w. So now I have w squared, because I know that if I square both sides, I get 9x squared. All right, now I have a, this is 3x, so I have to divide by 3x. So that gives me 7, right? So that's 7w plus 10. Now this is a lot easier to factor. Two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 7. w plus 5 and w plus 2. All right, but let's go back and plug in what w is. It's 3x plus 5 and 3x plus 2. So if I have our zeros, if I set these things equal to 0, right, I have 3x equals negative 5, x equals negative 5 over thirds, 5 thirds, excuse me. Subtract 2, 3x equals negative 2, x equals negative 2 thirds. All right, so let's try this one now. All right, again, always go here and notice what is my square. So my perfect square is 5x, so I'm going to change it to 5x squared. All right, and you don't have to use w, but um, I'm going to use w. All right, so wherever I see 5x, I'm going to put a w. So this would be w squared, because 5 squared is 25, plus I have to take a factor of 5 away. 20 divided by 5 is 4 w's. And then minus 21, I just leave that last one alone. So let's see here. So I have w, two numbers that multiply to negative 21 and add to 4 are positive 7 and negative 3. So my zero, oh, nope, got to plug that w back in. So now I have 5x plus 7 and 5x minus 3. So if I get my zeros, this is going to be subtract 7. That's going to be 5x equals negative 7 x equals negative 7 over 5. This one would be 5x equals 3, x equals 3 fifths. All right, so this is going to be 1, a little bit more than 1. This is going to be 1, this is going to be a little bit less than 1. And it's a quadratic with an a of 0, or positive, so it goes up. All right. All right, we're on page 281. I'm going to skip this first thing. It just is, it just confuses people. All right. Now, down here, this is what it, we're talking about. It's called something called a perfect square trinomial. Okay, a perfect square trinomial may be like this. X squared plus um, 16X plus 64. Or X squared minus 16X plus 64. So the, the, the thing is, the last term has to be positive and a perfect square. The middle term can be negative, all right? The first term has to be positive and a perfect square. And the middle term has to be this situation here where we have double A times B, all right? So here A is 1, so 2 times 1 times the square root of this is 8, so that's 16, so this would work, all right? And when we have that situation, the, what happens is you take the square root of the front, x in this case, and the square root of the back, 8 in this case, and then whatever sign 
is in the middle term, it's both, all right? All right, so let's take a look here. Let's see if we can do this one. Well, we can't do this one right off the bat because this is a negative, and these both have to be positive, so we can't do that one. That was too easy. Let's do the next one. All right, so A here would be 4, the square root of 16. B here would be uh, 10. So let's see, 2 times A times B, that's 80. Is that our middle term? Nope, can't do it. Let's go down here. A here would be 8. B would be 4. So 2 times 8 times 4. Let's see, that's 32 times 2 is 64, right? Does that work? Oh, that's 2. My bad. Excuse me. So this is 16 times 2, 32. Oh, it does work. All right, so let's do this one. All right, so square root of the first goes on the front, 8x, 8x. The square root of the back goes on the back, 2, 2. All right, and because it's minus here, it's minus in both places. Now, when it, you can write it like that, or you could write 8x minus 2 squared because you have the same thing twice. Let's try this one. A is 3, C is 1. 2 times 3 times 1 is 6, so it works. So I'm going to go straight to the where I write the same answer twice. So the square root of the front, the square root of the back, and then it's positive. Okay? All right, I'm on page 282, and we're going to do something called factor by grouping. I know Colt has his answer here, but um, I want to show you how to do this. So anytime you have four terms, you can do this. Um, you can try this. It doesn't always factor. Things don't always factor, all right? So what you do is you group the first two things, and you group the last two things. Now I'm looking in the first two. What's a common factor? Well, I can take x squared out, and then what do I have left? I had three. I took two away, so I have an x. I took two away. I have a three. That's great. Over here, I can take, it doesn't look like I can take anything out, but I always want to take the sign here. So if this is a negative, I want to take a negative 1 out. And then I divide by negative 1, that gives me x plus 3. Now you'll notice, these are the same. These are the same. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to like common factor that out. And what is left? x squared minus 1. Okay? Now, truth be told, this is difference of squares. All right, and that's much like what we just did, except for one thing. All right, hopefully you know this trick already. Whenever it's two terms and they're both perfect squares, I can take the square root of the first one, and it's separated by subtraction. I can take the square root of the last one. One of these is minus and one of these is plus. All right, and the reason is if you multiply this out, there's going to be a 0x term in the middle. That's, it cancels out. So that is factor by grouping. Okay? All right. We skip those steps. All right. Um, we identified the zeros. All right. That's fine. So we have, our zeros are going to be negative 3, 1, and negative 1. So negative 3, negative 3, negative 1, and 1. And we know, again, that we have a cubic that's positive, so it's going to start low and go high. Okay? Let's try the next page, page 283. All right, let's try this one. So I'm going to group the first two, and I'm going to group the second two. So here again, I can take an x squared out, and what's left? x plus 7. What can I take out? A negative 4. What's left? x plus 7. Remember, you have to have a negative and a negative. So now this is x squared minus 4, and what's left here, x plus 7. All right, so now this is a difference of squares. Square root of x squared is x, square root of 4 is 2, 1 is minus, 1 is plus, and then x plus 7. So the 0 for this would be 2, negative 2, and negative 7. So 2 negative 2 and negative 7 and again it's a quadratic oops not a quadratic excuse me cubic that is positive so it starts low and goes high okay all right i want you to go over to page 284 all right on page 284 what this is talking about is this is a fourth degree all right 
We can factor fourth degrees, no problem. You're gonna factor them just like you factored second degrees, all right? So I need two numbers that multiply to 100, it adds a negative 29. So x to the fourth now, so this is gonna be x squared. Because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. All right, two numbers that multiply to 100 and add a negative 29. Negative four and negative 25 multiply to 100 and add a negative 29. And then look at this, this is difference of squares. So square root of the first, Square root of the second is two, one's plus, one's minus. Uh, 25 is a perfect square. So square root of the first, square root of the last, one's plus, one's minus, it doesn't matter which. Okay, let's try this one. All right, so I'm gonna group the first two in here. So here I can take, ooh, an x to the third out. All right, then I have x minus 4 left. Over here I can take a negative x out and I have x minus 4. So I now have x to the third minus x times x minus 4. Well this I have a common factor I can take out, right? I can take an x out and then I have x squared minus 1. Uh-oh, difference of squares. By now we should know this. This is plus 1 and minus 1, and x minus 4. So our zeros, we have the 1 at 0, we have 1 at 1, we have 1 at negative 1, and we also have 1 at negative 4. Now this is an even root, and it's positive, so it's got to open up, right? So I'm going to go through here, bounce back here, go through here, go up even root. Let's try this one. Two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to negative 10. So x squared times x squared. Negative 9 and negative 1 multiply to 9 and add to 10. And then this is x minus 3 and x plus 3. x minus 1 and x plus 1. All right. So our, we have negative 1, negative 3. Positive 1 positive three. And again, fourth root, so it's going to be even. It opens up and behavior is the same. There we have it. Okay. All right. So that's the lesson. All right. Let's take a look at our homework. So our homework tonight is going to be on page 286. I want you to do this table. I don't care about the method or the reason. I just want you to factor it. All right. So just factor it. All right, and then on page 287, I need you to do number one, two, three, and then on the next page, number four. All right, best of luck. If you have uh, questions, again, the biggest thing here is to ask for help.